Chapter 3. Carol. I awakened to my delight in a library room back, or should I say forward, in the year 2150. The pleasantly feminine voice of central information broke into my awareness as I realized that she was still answering the last question I had asked before falling asleep. While I had spent eleven days back in 1976, I had returned to a moment in 2150 time only a few seconds later than when I had left. Did C.I. know what had happened to me? Uh, excuse me, I interrupted. Can you tell me how long I was asleep and what happened? You fell asleep, C.I. answered, three seconds ago, approximately ten seconds, in 2150 metric time. However, during the three seconds, you experienced the time translation of approximately eleven days in 1976 time. How do you know this? I asked, perplexed and somewhat uneasy. Your chair, C.I. responded, monitors all of your major physiological changes. Also, Leah 7927 and others use this computer to make your time translation computations. What's the 7927 for? I asked. When Leah was born, she was the seventh child to be given the name Leah in the Delta 927. My curiosity being fully aroused, I asked the next logical question. How do you assign names? The Macro Society has 30,000 names which fit the major soul patterns or vibrations. When a soul incarnates into the Macro Society, its vibration pattern is calibrated, and the name most closely fitting this pattern is then assigned. I thought about this for a moment, then asked, Can you tell me how closely the name John fits my vibration pattern? What well, fits very closely indeed, C.I. responded. But this is no accident, since your mother had a talent for this type of name selection. She was a very highly evolved soul, what you in 1976 call psychic. Since Mother had died during my early childhood, I really couldn't remember her too well, psychic or otherwise. I was just going to ask C.I. how it, or she, had known about my mother when Leah came bouncing into the room looking even more beautiful than I had remembered. Before she could say anything, I blurted out, But why couldn't I come back? I've missed you. We tried every time you slept, John, but your anger at Carl prevented translation the first night. After that, your belief in this reality was not strong enough to make translation possible until tonight. Well, how could I be in 1976 for 11 days and return here only three seconds later than when I left? You were never really gone from either space, John. But I think that concept of time as simultaneous, flexible subjectivity is beyond your current comprehension. Speaking of time, how old are you, Leah? Hmm, she said. That's at least one question that you forgot to ask central information. Before I answer, I'm going to ask you how old you think I am. Well, I said, I'm not sure, but you must be somewhere between 18 and 25, and I'm hoping you're over 21. You'll get your wish, and then some, she replied. Then with an impish grin, she said to the computer, please tell us my age. See, I promptly replied, in time, as understood by John, Leah 7927 will have 40 years in three weeks and three days. You were born in 2110? I exclaimed incredulously. I couldn't believe that Leah was almost 40 years old. Or, to say it in their macro way, they speak of years of a lifetime as we speak of years of study. She has had almost 40 years. That's right, she replied. We have learned to arrest the physical aging process. The only elderly-looking people you will see in the Macro Society are the very few who were born before the year 2000. Wait a minute, I interrupted. You mean there are people living over 150 years? Yes. Theoretically, level 10s could have as many years as they want, for greater mental awareness means greater physical control. Unlike Microman, our high macro beings can move at will between their physical and astral bodies. They only remain in physical bodies as long as there are lessons to learn at the physical level. Our goal is to free ourselves completely from the limited, low-vibration physical existence. But my physical body's enjoyable. I don't want to give it up as long as it's still young enough to bring me more pleasure than pain, I complained. Naturally, nobody does, Leah replied. That's the major reason we inhabit physical bodies, because we want to. But... Like all children, we eventually grow up and tire of our childish activities and seek new, more satisfying experiences. Thus, all souls evolve inevitably toward greater awareness. But I don't... I know, Leah interrupted. You aren't ready for that yet. But you are ready to start experiencing one of your student alphas. Let's go. I'll answer more of your questions on the way to your gamma building. 
As we walked hand in hand around the lake, I said nothing for a while, and Leah respected my silence. I was contemplating what C.I. had told me about the social structure of the macro society. It seems to me, I said, that this is a terribly regimented and overstructured society if everybody remains a student for the first 30 years of his life and must live in a student alpha, beta, and gamma. One of the problems in the 70s is that most young people in the industrial societies are kept too long as students, non-productive members of society. Yes, that's true, but our students are learning how to live satisfying, productive lives. They're not wasting their time memorizing facts or studying irrelevant materials, which they will soon forget because they don't use them in their daily life. Perfect examples would be memorization of historical or geographical details, your society's devotion to learning foreign languages, algebra, and geometry, most of which most people never need. In order to survive, Leah continued, we learned that we had to remove from our lives the non-essentials and the divisive concerns of micro-man. These included his micro-family, economic class, religion, nationality, language, cultural, and racial divisions. That's what I meant by massive regimentation, I said. There's no freedom left. You mean, Leah answered, freedom to feel separate and better from others? Freedom to be selfish and to put your own welfare above that of others? Freedom to compete, to fight, to destroy others? Freedom to pollute by overpopulating and overconsuming and by refusing to cooperate? She looked at me searchingly for a few seconds, then continued. You see, John, for man to survive on this planet, in these bodies, he had to learn to cooperate, which meant giving up his micro-freedoms. I know you feel our society is too regimented. But live in it for a while and see if our macro-society doesn't supply freedoms that your micro-society could never guarantee. Freedom from fear, disease, hunger, loneliness, crippling frustrations, and self-hate. If it can do all that, I sure want to see how it works. We were surrounded by the beauty of a day filled with sunshine and a sparkling blue lake, a cool breeze, and the lovely park replete with shade trees. Who does all the work to keep this paradise running? I asked. Servo mechanisms, was her answer. What you would call robots do most of our repetitious, boring tasks. However, helping these things grow is joy to many people. We do the work that pleases us, so you'll find some of us working in the gardens. We approached the first of the large residence buildings, and Lee informed me that this was the student gamma building in which I would be staying. I'll introduce you to your alpha mate, Leah said. Then I must leave you and return to my own work. You'll learn about 2150 and then you can decide whether or not you want to make an effort to stay here. Wait a minute, I said. You mean I'm actually going to live in an alpha and share a bedroom with some other girl? Of course, John. If you're going to learn how to live in our macro society, you've got to experience it. Well, yes, but I thought I'd be living with you, I objected. You can't live with me until you've reached at least seventh level and finished your tenth student triad. My God, I exclaimed. That'll be years from now, Leah. Leah laughed and said, Wait until you meet Carol, your alpha mate. I'm sure that you'll soon be happy at the prospect of sharing a bed with her for the next few years. But, but, I sputtered, you can't be serious. I love you. I don't want to bed down some other woman. Love, Leah replied, is determined by the level of one's awareness. With a micro level of awareness, love is an erotic dependency relationship characterized by jealous possessiveness. Oh, great. I growled, the classic rationalization for free love, otherwise known as promiscuity. Well, contrary to your micro-society, Leo responded, sex is not a dirty word in 2150. You'll find we share much more than just an orgasm, and we don't use another person as a sex object. But please, John, before you condemn us as moral degenerates, get to know us. Treat us as fairly and without prejudice as you would a research hypothesis. Now, are you ready to meet your alpha mate? I had been so preoccupied with our conversation that I had been only vaguely aware of entering a building, passing several young children swiftly ascending to the seventh floor, and walking down a long, glass-enclosed outer hall. It was lighted both by the outside sunshine and by overhead lighting, which seemed to radiate equally from all parts of the ceiling. We had turned down an interior hallway, and were now standing before a large blue door. I recalled that all the doorways we passed had been the same electric blue, while the walls were a pleasing shade of green. I remembered that we were on the seventh floor, which held the seventh triad student beta, and that green was the seventh level color. To postpone answering Leah's question about my readiness to meet my alpha mate, I asked about the blue doors. 
Blue is the eighth level color, Leah answered. And the seventh level is the door to the eighth level. So doors on the seventh level are blue. Of course, these student triad levels, which are entirely different from levels of awareness, but they share the same colors. Do the colors themselves have any special meaning? Leah smiled her tantalizing, mischievous smile and said, Carol will be glad to explain it to you. I was startled when the door in front of us slid silently open. Leah, sensing my surprise, drew my attention to a button beside the door, saying, Most of us use our macro power of psychokinesis, otherwise known as PK, to activate electronic circuits. You'll have to push the buttons till you develop PK. I wanted to think about Leah's statement, but the unusual room before us commanded my attention. We entered a huge, deeply carpeted alpha common room, 30 feet by 90 feet long. I was impressed by the three-dimensional murals on the wall depicting outdoor scenes so realistically that I felt I was looking through windows instead of works of art. The absence of furniture contributed to this feeling of oneness with the outdoors, for the only furniture in this gigantic room was a circle of ten large sitting devices at the end of the room. They didn't look much like chairs, but their purpose was obvious. The fifteen-foot ceiling was lit by some concealed source, creating a luminescence closer to that of sunshine than any I've ever experienced. The fact that there was no one in this room reminded me that we had seen no one since we reached the seventh floor. Where is everyone? I asked. Well, it's such a lovely day, Leah answered, that almost everyone is outdoors. We don't confine learning to the inside of classrooms as your society does. A moment later, a door at the end of the room opened and a young girl came running toward us. It was Carol. She was wearing the universal short tunic, and while Leah and I were wearing short stocking-like boots, her feet were bare. She placed her right hand on Leah's face. Leah returned the gesture, and they looked into each other's eyes for what seemed to be a very long time as I grew increasingly self-conscious. Then, without speaking, Carol touched my face and began the same smiling but silent encounter. I felt as if I was drowning in her magnificent hazel eyes, set in as pretty a face as I've ever seen. Reluctantly, I broke our eye contact to become aware of a beautifully formed body cast from a giant mold. Carol was as tall as I, and I'm six feet three.